Welcome to Ron Tape. Today, we're taking a trip to Boston to explore the thrilling world of the town, a 2010 crime drama directed by and starring Ben Affleck. Follow a group of lifelong friends turned skilled bank robbers as they navigate loyalty, love, and betrayal in Charlestown, a neighborhood notorious for breeding criminals. Will they escape their past, or will the law catch up to them? Let's dive in. In the secluded district of Charlestown, Boston, an ambitious quartet Doug, James, Glonzy, and Desmond had their sights set on a daring bank heist. These robbers were strategic in nature, they studied the movements of staff members as well as money couriers visiting the bank while meticulously planning every detail for a successful robbery. As soon as the courier man stepped foot into the bank, Doug and his fellow criminals emerged from hiding to take control of the room. The terrified bank manager Claire was ordered by them to immediately open up the safe of feet that could only be accomplished at 8.15 p.m. With no other viable option, she followed their instructions fearfully and opened it for them in compliance. The entire sum of money was quickly stashed away in bags, the security camera recordings were deliberately destroyed and James, being the most merciless among them all, brutally assaulted the assistant manager for his lack of compliance. Claire spotted a tattoo on the back of James's neck while they were escaping, so the group took her hostage. Once they felt safe, they let her go and ran off. The police along with FBI agents Adam and Dino soon arrived to investigate the scene. The robbery was executed swiftly and with precision, leaving no trace behind even the getaway car had been set ablaze. Claire became a witness to the entire incident, she was so petrified that she remained in shock, her body shook uncontrollably as Adam questioned her. Adam revealed to her that Boston had seen 370 bank robberies the previous year, with 90% of them originating from Charlestown. So as soon as a robbery occurred, police would immediately block off the bridge leading on and off mainland area from Charlestown. With his considerable expertise in apprehending these heist artists, Adam was confident he'd be able to capture these new robbers shortly. In contrast, the robbers congregated at a disused hockey field. Utilizing Claire's ID card that he had taken from her, James discovered she resided close to them. To ascertain what information Claire gave to law enforcement authorities, Doug determined to lurk around her residence. With the loot they just collected, they squandered it on their illicit drug business. To legitimize their money and cover up any traces of illegality, Doug instructed Fergie, the owner of a nearby flower shop, to carry out some acts of money laundering. In addition to that, the bandits celebrated by smoking marijuana, boozing liberally, gambling recklessly and seeking carnal relations with girls, except for Doug who was more reserved in his frivolous pursuits. Doug had been trailing behind Claire the following morning when she ventured into the laundry and he pretended to read a newspaper. Much to his surprise, Claire suddenly approached him asking for loose change because she'd forgotten hers. The sight of her clothing spattered in assistant manager's blood reminded her of the horrific incident, causing Doug to immediately soften and console her. The conversation between Doug and Claire had been pleasant, so he asked her to accompany him to the coffee shop. While joking around about his job, Doug revealed that he was a sculptor. He wanted to keep enjoying her company and invited her on an unexpected boat ride under the starry night sky, something which seemed like a great way for both of them to unwind. Claire then inquired whether or not there was any truth behind rumors regarding Charlestown being referred as the den of robbers. To this question, Doug firmly denied it by clarifying that these were nothing but baseless stories. The following day, James approached Doug in order to learn of the discoveries from his examination of Claire. As he threatened that if something was amiss with her then she would be terminated immediately, Doug calmly stated there was nothing out of the ordinary and that their mission was robbery for monetary gain, not cold-blooded murder. Adam came to visit Claire as he knew she was from Charlestown and suspected her in the robbery that happened at the bank. Later on that day, Doug asked Claire out for a date, where during their time together, she opened up about how traumatized the incident left her especially with one of her assistant managers being beaten up badly enough to require eye surgery. Claire unveiled the details of her encounter with the FBI and revealed that they were searching for clues about the robber's origin in Charleston. Upon hearing this information, Doug was worried for Claire's safety but said nothing else. 
With a new plan in mind, he put his date on hold to visit her colleague at the hospital before continuing their night out at a cozy cafe. Claire stumbled upon a tattoo of the robber who had assaulted his assistant, depicting a fighter. However, in fear she was reluctant to speak up and report it to the FBI. Doug knew that what lay on James's neck was indeed evidence of criminal activity and encouraged her to tell law enforcement, he insisted that she equip herself with courage before moving forward with reporting this piece of information. Later, when Doug drove Claire home, she disclosed that unreparable harm had been done to her car due to some hooligans throwing bottles at it. Upon learning the delinquents' traits, Doug immediately asked James to reward them for what they did by giving them a lesson. As soon as he saw how viciously Doug was administering punishment on the punks, James realized that these young adults made an enormous mistake and took extreme measures, shooting one of their legs three times. The following day, Dino informed Adam that one of the criminals may be a man named Desmond who worked for a certain firm and often took mysterious absences. Promptly after hearing this, they began to surreptitiously monitor his home from afar. Just then, the four robbers were joyfully observing an outdoor barbecue gathering. After thoroughly examining the photos acquired, the police and FBI uncovered lots of useful information that yielded new suspects, Glonzi with a knack for stealing cars, James, who had spent nine years in prison after shooting a teen, and Doug as the group leader and mastermind. Through their investigation, they uncovered Doug's past relationship with Krista and the haunting fact that his father Stephen was incarcerated for heinous reasons such as kidnapping, robbery, and murder. On the contrary, Doug had yet another date with Claire. As she left to use the restroom, James suddenly appeared which sent a wave of panic through Doug's body. He asked him to depart at once but was too late as Claire came back shortly after and made their acquaintance with James. After becoming acquainted with her, he put on an act that he did not know anything about her while slyly incriminating poor Doug who clandestinely became familiarized with their victim. After coming back home, Doug and James got into a heated argument because Doug was aware that James had trailed him. On the contrary, James detested the notion of Doug having an association with Claire who happened to be an eyewitness to their misdeed. Doug announced his intentions to eliminate Claire from the team, but he wasn't ready to act on it just yet. Subsequently, Doug visited his father, Stephen, in prison and questioned why he never attempted to search for Doug's mother. Stephen replied that his wife was a bad woman, spouse, and parent and he saw no reason to look for someone who intentionally left her family. Upon returning to Claire's place, Doug pursued a relationship with her and they became intimate that night. The following morning, Doug and his associates undertook another robbery mission, targeting an armored car transporting money. Disguised as nuns, they successfully intercepted the car and took control of the guards. However, when one of the guards took Doug hostage and threatened to kill him unless they relinquished the money, James shot the guard without hesitation. The robbery was reported and the police quickly arrived at the scene. While attempting to escape, the robbers were cornered on a narrow road and James shot at the surrounding police without hesitation. This caused one of the remaining police cars to crash. The robbers switched to a different car and set fire to the first car to remove any evidence. Despite a bridge to Charlestown being closed, they were able to evade the police. Shortly after the incident, Adam and Dino interrogated the four suspects. Although Adam was convinced that Doug and his friends were the robbers, there was no concrete evidence and they were eventually released. Adam vowed to have them arrested and sentenced to death. The following day, Doug gifted Claire a necklace during their meeting. Claire revealed that she had resigned from her job and planned to work as a volunteer. Upon hearing this, Doug immediately extended an invitation for Claire to join him on a trip anywhere she wished to go. Later, Adam visited Claire and showed her the files of the four robbery suspects, including a photo of Doug, which surprised her. Adam knew that Claire was involved with Doug, which could create problems for her. Meanwhile, James informed Doug about a new mission from Fergie, the flower shop owner. Doug, who wanted to change his ways and live peacefully with Claire, declined the offer, fearing for their safety. However, James did not accept Doug's decision and left his group of friends. 
They had an argument that escalated into a physical fight. After the fight, James revealed to Doug that he had killed a teenager in the past because the teenager planned to shoot Doug, and James took the bold move to shoot the teenager to save Doug. This resulted in James being imprisoned for nine years, but he didn't want anything in return, he just wanted Doug to remain loyal to their friendship. Although Doug appreciated James and his family for taking care of him when his father was imprisoned, he decided to leave his current life for a better one. He went to the flower shop to meet Fergie, where he refused to go on the next mission and gave Fergie a wad of money as compensation. However, Fergie refused to accept Doug's rejection and forced him to take on the mission. Doug became angry with Fergie and accused him of not risking his life but only giving missions and taking money. Fergie threatened to kill Claire and then revealed what happened to Doug's mother. Doug's father, Stephen, also worked for Fergie, and when Stephen refused to carry out a mission, Fergie castrated him with a chemical liquid as a lesson. As a result, Doug's mother suffered from depression and took her own life. Rusty, Fergie's bodyguard, was prepared to use his shotgun in case Doug attempted to attack Fergie. Hearing this news shocked Doug as he had been searching for his mother without knowing that she had been dead for a long time. Doug left and went straight to Claire's house, concerned about her well-being. He found her distressed after discovering that her boyfriend was a wanted criminal who had abducted her. Doug apologized and attempted to explain, but Claire, who was already disillusioned, immediately asked him to leave and never return. After a fight with his best friend and learning some harsh truths about his parents, Doug found himself alone and turned to drugs. He was also threatened by Fergie after initially declining his mission. Eventually, Doug went to the flower shop and participated in the heist, but warned Fergie and Rusty that he would harm them if anything happened to Claire. Doug later visited Claire to explain everything and answer her questions honestly. Fergie then gathered the group to reveal their next target a stadium with $3.5 million in armored cars. Adam and Dino observed Fergie's flower shop from a distance while keeping an eye on Doug and his friends. Later, Adam met Krista, who used to date Doug, at a bar and identified himself as an FBI agent to obtain information about Doug. The mission commenced with James and Doug posing as police officers, while Glonzi and Desmond disguised themselves as medics to avoid suspicion. With the assistance of a friend, they managed to enter the stadium undetected, and Desmond deactivated the security cameras. Doug and James pretended to be police officers investigating a robbery when they encountered security officers inside the stadium, and they swiftly subdued and restrained them, claiming they were the robbers. Upon immobilizing the security guard, Doug and James threatened the officer inside the safe room, warning him not to call for emergency assistance as their families were at risk of being harmed by a gang of robbers. The frightened officer complied, allowing them to take all the money. Doug and James later met up with Desmond and Glonzi in the stadium basement, where they loaded the stolen money into an ambulance. However, Doug grew uneasy when he noticed the complete absence of security guards. It was then discovered that they were already encircled by the police. It turned out that Adam had coerced Krista into revealing Doug's next robbery target. The FBI, police, and SWAT teams surrounded the building both inside and outside, and a gunfight broke out between them and the criminals. Desmond was left unprotected and was eventually stunned by a flashbang and fatally shot. With no way out, Glonzi devised a plan to leave through the front door as a distraction for the police. Meanwhile, Doug and James would disguise themselves as police officers and make a run for it. Though Glonzi knew he would not survive, he was willing to sacrifice himself to save his two friends. Doug and James quickly changed their clothes and, fortunately, managed to evade detection by a group of policemen who had entered the building. James fled with a bag of money, while Doug pretended to mingle with the police. Meanwhile, Adam learned that two men dressed as policemen had attacked the stadium security officers. He searched for the robbers and found James, who was attempting to escape with a bag. Adam knew the men had disguised themselves as police officers. He quickly instructed other officers to encircle James, who found himself cornered by the policemen's guns and took cover behind a mailbox. James, feeling trapped, opened fire on the police. 
Adam attempted to persuade James to surrender, but James refused, preferring to die than be jailed. In a last-ditch effort to fight back, James stood up, but he was shot in front of Doug. Enraged, Doug drove a police car to the flower shop, where he killed Rusty and Fergie, who he believed were responsible for his friend's deaths. Doug then contacted Claire and arranged to meet, but Adam, Dino, and several other policemen were already there, anticipating his move. Doug had been monitoring them from a distance and had pretended to be heading to Claire's house. Before ending the call, Doug apologized to Claire for his actions. Claire hinted to Adam about the presence of police in her home through a secret sentence known only to them. To divert their attention, Claire deceived Adam and other police officers, focusing them on waiting for him, while Doug disguised himself as a courier. He was able to walk past multiple officers without raising suspicion and buried the money-filled bag in Claire's backyard. Doug successfully escaped on a train, while Adam belatedly realized that Doug had uncovered the ambush and was not arriving. After some time had passed, Claire found the buried bag while gardening, which contained a letter from Doug indicating that he wanted her to use the money for better purposes. Doug had left Charlestown in pursuit of a new life, with the hope of one day reconnecting with Claire. In the movie's conclusion, Claire donated money in memory of Doug's deceased mother and restored the ice hockey arena where Doug had played as an athlete. Meanwhile, Doug resided in a secluded house 